wow, you know, if it hadn't been for me to be able to change my political platform and have the ability to just change and understand both sides of the argument, we probably wouldn't have figured this out. Okay. This whole vaccine debate is huge. There's a reasoning behind why this vaccine debate is huge. Uh, they deal with viruses. And then the whole thing with Monsanto and the pesticides and all the chemicals, I wouldn't say it's intentionally smoke and mirrors. I would say it would be a very convenient scapegoat to blame the uploaded corrupted data from the viruses on the pesticides and Monsanto and all the different chemicals, conglomeration of chemicals, whatever is in the vaccines. It is a very convenient scapegoat. And it is running rampant all over the holistic and the allopathic industry. And many of you are still adopting those thought processes that it's Monsanto's fault. It's the pesticide's fault. It's the chemtrail's fault. It's the 5G's fault. It's the fluoride's fault. That's still a very archaic thought process. That doesn't constitute too much thinking at all. We as jelly juicers have been thinking and been really tearing apart all the information regarding the immune system and antibodies and hormones and viruses. And we have come to a conclusion, finally, okay? We have finally figured out that really it's the viruses. Now, if your body is very imbalanced, okay, and you have an over conglomeration of minerals, Oh, yeah, they call it heavy metals because it sounds so much scarier, and then you can blame Monsanto and pesticides for all the heavy metals, but it's called minerals. If you have a stagnated lymphatic system, stagnated uh, digestive system, and you're taking on, and, uh, taking on more minerals than your body can release, guess what? It's no different than having an overaccumulation of candida. It lowers your ability to fight off infection and viruses, and it allows for new viruses and new pathogens to come in and take up residence. So when somebody has an overabundance of candida, it lowers their immune system. When somebody has a constipated lymphatic system and a constipated digestive system, guess what? It lowers their immune system and it allows the person to take on more viruses. When somebody go gets uh, their tonsils taken out and they get other organs taken out because they don't want to deal with the symptoms, guess what? It causes a weakness and then more viruses and more pathogens and more exploitative predators come in and take up residence and destroy the body over time. When you get stem cell therapy and transplants, that also, if they want them to stay for however long they think that the stem cells and the transplant can stay, what do they do? They suppress the immune system. What, do you, what happens when you suppress the immune system? Your defenses are lowered, and guess what? You're now exposed to all the rampant viruses everywhere that will take up residence and then destroy you from the inside. Okay? Th this is now a no-brainer. It's not Monsanto. Now, Monsanto may be very careful on what they say, and they would rather take one for the team so Bayer can then create more immunotherapies to sell. Now, I could see where that conspiracy might be more like acceptable, it would actually be more plausible than saying that, oh yeah, they're just trying to destroy us and Monsanto is the evil. Oh no, it's the ignorance of the population is what's destroying people. It's not Monsanto. They're just very careful on what to say, what not to say. And hey, better to give you guys money and take one for the team than to kill off their cash cow, which is the immunotherapies, the prescription drugs, and then they'll keep, you know, working on looking for the new and emerging viruses that are coming to surface, especially around this global warming, the tropical climate. Like, you know, I was looking at this PM, or what is it, PMC article, how influenza A is, um, seems to originate from Vietnam, a tropical climate. The Amazon has tropical exotic viruses, parasites, diseases. You see like that picture, that ProMed picture, where it shows where all the different viruses stem from. 
and you see America has like the measles virus and Africa has like the Ebola and uh, anthrax and all that. And so you see where all these viruses originate from. And we are a global society with weak bodies and we are carriers of all of these viruses. And guess what? When you activate your immune system to such a level to where, yes, you are exposed to pathogens, so that activates your immune system. When you artificially activate your immune system by, yes, by taking vaccines, which you need to because we have very mutated people and very weak immune systems that cannot handle being exposed to a virus in the, in the population, yes, it will activate your immune system, okay? Anytime you activate your immune system, you are creating antibodies. That's basically antibodies that has the virus in it. That's replication. That's virus replication. But what happens is, is that when you take on these antibodies and you take on the weaker version, yes, you'll get symptoms and then no, you won't supposedly know the next time you're around it, you won't have a major reaction because your body has built up a protection. However, there's such thing as too much protection. When you have too many antibodies, regardless of what they are, they agglutinate and they turn into the disease itself and then they destroy you. There is a very delicate balance when it comes to antibody acquisition. Same thing when you suppress your immune system because you're all about, not all of you, but those of you that are in the holistic industry are all about colloidal silver, cannabis, elderberry syrup, diet matches earth, all the different detoxes, essential oils, um, anything that's antibiotic, that's in the, like, like let's say, um, ashwagandha, um, milk thistle, anything that you see in the holistic store that's in these little bottles, those are all antibiotic. That's immune suppression. When you suppress your immune system, guess what? You left open for more viruses for to come in and take up residence. It weakens your immune system. It weakens your body. This is how you have to understand what immune suppression is. It leaves you open. It leaves you a sitting freaking duck. And then when you focus too much on blaming Monsanto and blaming the chemtrails and blaming 5G, guess what? You're not really focused on the real true problem. You have programmed viruses in your body that are causing so much hell. And then what do you do? You apply the wrong programming on your body. And then it contributes and it actually helps the viruses replicate. Okay? You know, I mean... I was thinking about all the different stem cell therapies. When someone gets stem cell therapy, well, yeah, you're taking on a foreign object. Okay, now here's the thing. Some will say, well, well, they're taking baby stem cells from your body and they're just transferring it. Hold on a second, my hair. You realize that your body's DNA already has a program based upon the viruses. So even if you did get baby stem cells from different parts of your body, it's already been programmed. And guess what? Those little stem cells are outnumbered by all the cells that already have been programmed. And then if it's somebody else's stem cells, it's a foreign object. So let's say you're not on J-Juice, okay? If your body is strong enough, okay, potentially, it'll kick out the foreign objects because that's what the body's supposed to do if it has a relatively working immune system. That's what autophagy is. Now, if you're on J-Juice, okay, you're activating your immune system and strengthening your body because you're getting access to bioavailable nutrition. It's going to kick them out. Now, here's the thing with the J-juice and transplants. The body, if it's getting what it needs, this is the theory that I have that I'm still waiting for somebody to actually confirm, is that the body is not going to destroy itself while it's healing. So while it's trying to regrow that organ that you have a transplant for, It'll probably most likely keep that transplant in until you don't need it anymore. And then eventually it'll find a way to shut that transplant down. And then you already have now a new heart. But that's like my theory. And I don't see it as any, I see it as a plausible. Because, I mean, let's say you're on dialysis and you don't have kidneys. Well, that's the perfect time to do J-Juice when you have when you are on dialysis. Because you need the electrolytes, you need the water, you need the nutrition. And then, hey, you have a backup system, which is dialysis. Okay? So it's like there are ways that when you give your body the right thing that you can have the potential to regrow the organs. Because people have regrown their tonsils. They had tonsils taken out a long time ago. It got regrown. When people get their tonsils taken out, which is the first line of defense against the viruses, 
but that is the most infected portion of the body if the body is not working correctly. Kids are getting their tonsils taken out. Guess what? They're now a sitting duck for every single virus that's out there. And it's going to keep uploading. So every time a kid gets sick, a virus, guess what? That's uploaded corrupted DNA that's going to mutate them in the future. Behavior problems to cancer disease and chronic illness. When someone gets their appendix taken out, that also is a needed thing in the body. But people don't realize that they have a mutated system, stagnated system, and those areas are are accumulating toxins in the body until they get it taken out and cleaned out. And now they are left less than, open and a sitting duck for some aggressive virus to come in and shut the body down or go after a weak main organ. I mean, this is some pretty heavy shit. So this is why I had an issue with the immunotherapies. Because why the fuck would you suppress your immune system? That's your line of defense. These viruses, when you look at that ProMed picture, I mean, I'm going to, I should actually um, print that out because that's some pretty heavy stuff. But that picture, I should go to my gallery. Because uh, that, that, that should scare anybody when they think about how, when they say they're world travelers, if you're a world traveler, you have a lot more exposure to some crazy ass viruses. So here we go. So in, so in America, you have like salmonella, measles, man, mumps, Zika virus, hepatitis A, E. coli. I wish, let me see if I can find a way to, let me go to, because I can't get that all illuminated correctly. All right, wrong. Here, do this. Somebody on my Facebook actually posted that picture, Enid Hansen. So here we go. Can I make it? All right. Okay. Well, I guess that's all I can see. So Salmonella, Zika virus, E. coli. I can't even read all the wording. Um, so I can go into ProMed and see. <laughs> There's a way, there, oh, here we go. Nope, I still can't, they still, it's up here. Okay, so hepatitis A, measles, and there's a bunch. I mean, it's this picture that I, I don't know if you guys can see this. Ah, uh, never mind. All right, so then, um, I'm sorry, South America has the measles. It has hantavirus, yellow fever, these are the big ones. Then the smaller ones, I can't really see. Then in Africa, there's cholera, Lassa fever, polio, Rift Valley fever, Ebola, and some other ones, diarrhea, something diarrhea and fever. And then there's MERS and something else over there to the right of Africa. And then, and then there's like hundreds and hundreds. I mean, I can't even... I, I can't even count how many. And there, and then I guess in Europe, there's polio, measles, anthrax, dengue, measles, West Nile virus. And then there's other ones in like Australia. So, I mean, if you really want to know all the different viruses in every single region, just Google it. I mean, all the information's there. So imagine having hundreds and hundreds of viruses you're exposed to. Maybe you test negative for it, but at some point you could, if you've been into those different regions, and then your immune system and your body as you're aging is then wearing down, guess what? You could, these things will come to surface and then they turn into some kind of autoimmune disorder. Okay? I mean, this is, this is what's crazy about the medical system today. So everything in the allopathic and the holistic world suppresses your immune system or activates it to such a point to where it becomes overabundant and then those antibodies will then agglutinate and then turn into the disease itself. One example is the thing with the HIV to AIDS. You could be HIV negative, been exposed to it, still have be a negative, but as your body breaks down because you're not taking care of it and your immune system is coming down, then it turns, and then you become HIV positive. Then the, that's when people get scared because they know once it becomes HIV positive, AIDS is not too far down the line. When someone tests positive for Lyme, an antibody for Lyme, oh, they, I mean, it's not like a great thing to say, oh yeah, I test positive for Lyme. 
it's not like you want to. It's not like a source of protection. You test positive for Lyme, you now have a crazy ass disease. Okay, so I mean, there is that that fine line that where testing positive is a good thing because it shows you have a layer of protection to the government, but also testing positive is a bad thing because that disease is not too far behind. And so, yes, this is why J-Juice is so important. We figured out that the probiotics in the J-Juice is what destroys these viruses and it keeps the, uh, the candida under control because you have too many antibodies, too much candida, guess what? It lowers your immune system, allows these viruses to go and have a freaking party. And it's like predator and prey, the host and the parasite. Okay? Um, you know, if you are a weak person, which is somebody that is aging, that has a bunch of different autoimmune disorders, has missing organs, you're now going to be a host for many different parasites, not just worms, but also viruses, until those viruses and those worms basically destroy you. And that's what death is. When someone's in hospice, those viruses and the programming and the parasites basically destroy the person from the inside, okay? Um, if you're a strong person, it's, it's an individual. It's basically, you know, when you're a strong person, you're fighting for your own life. You're not fighting for somebody else's life because that person has their own journey. You're fighting for your own. You're deflecting all the predators that really serve to want to feed off of you. Okay? You have to fight for your own life. You cannot fight for somebody else's life. You can give information so that way they are armed with the info to fight for their own life, but we cannot fight anybody's battles, okay? This is so individual because, you know, you can't be strong. I mean, you can try to be strong for somebody else, but if they don't want it, then it's just wasted energy. And now you are now taking part in where they're feeding off of your energy. You're wanting to, you know, because if you want them to go and do this and you want, and you're giving them everything you have and, and they're not taking it, guess what? They're sucking the life out of you. That's another parasitic quality. That's why I say to you guys, as much as you want to introduce this to someone, that's great, introduce and then leave and then drop the seed and then get the hell out. Because believe me, when people get desperate, they, you know, I mean, when they get desperate, they'll look at this, but if they don't really take this on really and chase after the information, you may be giving them all this stuff and they're not understanding and then it's just like, and then you get, I don't know, it's, it's a very different dynamic than when somebody actually understands this, wants to understand this and take this on and they do something about it. Okay, I took this on, I dealt with the healing symptoms, I dealt with the flack, I dealt with the ridicule, I dealt with the hatred, I dealt with all of that. Some people are going to have to deal with the battle. It's going to be a battle, yes. We can't just give this this to somebody. They have to actually want it and fight it. So this is an individual thing. You're fighting for your own life, not anybody else's, for your own. Your kids will deal with what they have to deal with. It's their life. Okay? So this is why I get really honest. Like, don't try to guide somebody really too much with this, especially if they're transplant patients or they're like hospice patients or breast cancer patients or any kind of cancer patients, because I'll tell you what, they won't understand the pain part if they haven't really truly understood this. And so this really truly is an individual journey. And then really what I offer to you guys is learn how to talk about this. When you suppress your immune system, you leave yourself open for viruses to upload crazy ass programming. And that's what you see all the, the mutations. Okay, we figured out that too much candida lowers the immune system and allows these viruses to replicate. When somebody's drinking fruit juice and they're in hospice, guess what? That sugar in the fruit juice feeds the yeast, feeds the candida. It lowers the immune system so those viruses can still go and wreak havoc and then shut down the vital organs so that way they die. Salt has never been anything that anyone died from unless you're a slug getting salt sprinkled on you by some kid. Okay. It's funny, I got, a, I got an email last night. Someone was like saying like, oh God, the salt, the hypernitremia or whatever. And I'm like, 
drink fucking water. Okay, no one dies from hypernitremia. You drink water. They just say that if you don't drink water, this is what happens if you have too much salt. But a, a, a pretty much a thinking person out there who eats pretzels and popcorn and other salty type stuff usually drinks water. And if you don't, then you have bigger issues going on that you wouldn't even come across this because you wouldn't even try it because you have major issues going on. Okay. So anyways, so yeah. So your immune system, what they're doing with your immune system out there to manage your cancer disease and chronic illness is leaving you open as a sitting duck. I'm sorry, I got to be the one to tell you. So all this newfangled modern medicine, using your own T cells to go after the cancers, sounds great in theory, sounds great conceptually, sounds great for a shortcut, but it doesn't last long. And if you're already having to acquire those services, you're already over the edge. You're already gonna accumulate too many antibodies. You're already gonna suppress your immune system. You're gonna be open. Now you're in a hospital where there's so many viruses are rampant. You're around other people that have a lot of viruses that are carriers or asymptomatic. And so yes, aging is communicable. And then somebody says, oh, well, why can't you say that, that you, you think is communicable? Oh, yes, it is, but it takes work. The de death process is far easier to acquire than the life process, just to be totally honest with you. It's very easy to destroy yourself than it is to actually want to live because guess what? Pain is life because that means that your body's trying to finally heal and you're allowing it and you're feeling to heal. And then there's the life programming. The death programming is easy. All you got to do is take all your drugs, okay, and then check out and pretend nothing is wrong. It's, that's what I'm saying. It, the life programming is very hard. The death programming is very easy. Aging is communicable. Youthing, not as, not as easy. It'll take a strong person to be able to withstand the healing process, especially if they're that sick. So this is just something else for your arsenal of information to when you talk to people about this, and especially if you are computer oriented and you understand CPUs and programming and firewalls and uh, malware and uh, virus protection, this is going to resonate, especially with the millennials who are in the computer industry. I'm sure Silicon Valley gets this, those that are in Silicon Valley my hometown, this isn't that difficult to, to grasp as a concept. Viruses are really truly what has caused everything. But the candida lays the groundwork and that's like usually the first sign that the cancer is gonna come to surface is when you have so much candida and now you have all these um, issues and you've lowered your immune system and then this is when the cancer comes in. The viruses take over and then they reprogram everything and then you have to try your might is to figure out how to stop the programming and then reprogramming. But then the allopathic holistic industry only does half of the equation. They do their best to stop the programming, but they don't know how to reprogram the body to a life programming. So in essence, it just gives you a stay of execution. That's the reality of it. This is the world that we live in. It's up to us to change it. Bye.